Since the dawn of time, storytelling has been what kept humanity together. Unified through shared experiences and shared emotions, from fear to joy, successes to failures, stories told around a campfire was the only peace of mind our ancestors had from the constant danger lurking just outside the safety of the flames. So over time, we started creating technologies and concepts to preserve our way, very way of life, from cave paintings to photographs, motion pictures, to the big screens and little screens we learn to love today. And just when we thought we got everything figured out, came virtual reality, a promise of unparalleled immersion, a new frontier for our storytellers to master once again. Now, many of you today have probably heard of virtual reality or tried it, and if you haven't, you've probably seen videos like these circulating the internet. <laughs> So it doesn't matter to me, you know, how immersive these first-person shooter games become or how exhilarating these roller coasters turn out to be. For me, it doesn't really do much. About three years ago, I had my first VR experience with the Oculus Developers Kit. And at that time, the visuals were grainy and the experiences were nauseating at best. But I was blown away. I was enlightened. To me, we have solved humanity's biggest problem with each other, our biggest conflict, our inability to understand, relate, and empathize with one another. If you think about it, every single one of us have our own universes. Now, although we share many of that universe with one another, we all live in our own worlds. We all have our own unique storylines with our own quirky characters. Now, look, our brain cells even look like micro-universes. But with VR, we can peer into someone else's world. We can interact with their characters, interact with their stories, and understand them from the inside out. So my team and I, we took to the world, looking for stories and passionate people to drive this technology forward, transcending from being this embodiment of gaming to more of a portal to understanding humanity. This is a film we shot in Guilin while visiting China. Here we're using virtual reality for culture preservation. For generations, Yang and his people have used these giant comrades for fishing. Now these birds can dive upwards of 45 miles per hour, the perfect predator on the Li River. And although the tradition of Yang and his people and comrade fishing will die with him, we can be certain that virtual reality will preserve the legacy of him and his people for generations to come. When we start understanding someone's culture, we can then begin to appreciate their values. So something crucial that I learned in my journey and my travels is that virtual reality is a global industry. This means that people and teams from around the world are dedicating their lives to building the future of virtual reality. And with us, we sit in our office in San Francisco and we bathe in our Californian sunlight and sip on our iced coffees from Phil's while people around the world are trampling all over our four-day work week. Take Taiwan, for example. We met the most incredible camera development company out there. These guys work day in and day out perfecting their craft under one unified mission to deliver the best visual quality to live action content. And the best part is, there is no glamorous tech campus, there is no nap pods or snack bars, there is no unlimited vacation time, just pure dedication and passion crammed into a two bedroom apartment. Here's another company based in New Zealand, because CGI, doesn't matter how good it gets, cannot capture the soul. So these guys spend all their time scanning real life human beings, preserving them in volumetric videos. We all have those sentimental moments where we want to rip open the fabrics of reality to open a portal and talk to loved ones far, far away or simply relive a memory. Well, here's an example of a mother's first words to her baby child. This infant's gonna grow up one day and revisit this memory through virtual reality. He's not gonna remember this moment, but when he sees it, he's gonna hold this moment most dear to his heart more important than anything in the world, because these are the experiences that matter. These are the content that we hold most dear because they're personal. Now, what I'm trying to say is the future of virtual reality isn't gonna come from big companies. It's not gonna come from Silicon Valley. 
Instead, it's going to be told through stories from the most unlikeliest of places. From two-bedroom apartments in Taiwan to New Zealand, to even right here in India. And the best reward for us all, or for my team and I at least, is to be able to find all these gems from around the world, consolidate them, and give them a voice through immersive storytelling. And that's what we want to use virtual reality for. So if you think you have a story that was worth sharing, or a voice that needs to be heard, please come up to me. We would love to share your story. It doesn't matter whether you're a team building amazing technology or a beautiful culture. Please come share it with me, because at the end of the day, as human beings, what we crave is not entertainment; it's to be understood by one another. Thank you very much.